on the same uh, on the other side though, Coast have a very different sort of mindset here. Mm -hmm. Picked up the Draven, picked up the Elise, a lot of early mid game power here, and a lot of threat about to head towards CLG. So the thing about you know both Tristan and Jace, uh, they're pretty squishy early, and you and Tristan her her early game is fairly weak in, game, in lane, so if they do take this Evelyn from the jungle, and you can roam and pressure both of these high priority carries that CLG already have picked, uh, then Coast can come out with some very early momentum, and if they can snowball that one along, you know, with Draven, always uh, all this uh, Coast team is along the same lines there, then they can end the game before Double Lift gets to his, you know, Final form, I guess. Well, kind of Logic Gaming have picked their last couple of champions to try to hold that on and get themselves toward the late game. Nasus, Oriana coming through, but Coast still wanted to start fights. They've grabbed up Zed, so uh, I think we know what Coast wants to do. Oh, yeah, so they don't have the rain guard to all in double lift and blow them up, but Zed. Pretty good choice as well, because if you ultimate on Tristana and she knocks you away with Buster Shot, you can just press R again, get right back to her. So knockaways, not very effective on Zed. Gonna have to use the Flash or the Rocket Jump to get out of there. But Zed and Shen combo, I always love this combo. It's such a potent diving combo. The dual ninjas uh, getting into your back line can really cause a lot of trouble. And even early game, don't forget, if Shifter doesn't roam, they can do the Evelyn Shen combo too. And that's Invisible Shen coming oh, out. Gosh. That's oh, gosh. Oh, the Invis Ninja. That's oh, the only man. thing better than the, the ninja from the shadows. There we go. Just full invisible. Doesn't even have a shadow. Light passes <laughs> exactly. through him. So. All right. Rough, rough road ahead, I think, for Counter Logic Gaming. But... Heck, they've played towards the late game all the time. We've actually yeah. heard players talk kind of admirably about CLG's ability to just hold on to games that are mm -hmm. that are terribly just difficult to win. And uh, Cutie, Cutie Pie is probably the, the most frank player. Uh, and I asked him about it actually um, before uh, he actually went on and played last time. And I was like, yeah, so tell me about that. And he's like, well, we don't normally lose those games that CLG like tries to hold on to unless we do something really, really stupid. But... I mean, it's still really admirable. Like, we get we get used to playing the long games because we scrim them enough. So, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> that could definitely be in store here. Yeah, and CLG, it looks like they're definitely building for it, too. Even with their jungler pickup, grabbing that Nasus, the wave clear of Spirit Fire, is what you want to get to late game. You got to continue to clear out waves, try and defend your turrets, keep them up for long enough for Tristana to get that farm that she wants. No matter how many Frankers uh, Cutie Pie sends at you, <laughs> going to be able to defend that one. So here we go, guys. The game is afoot. Here we go. Number four of the day, Counter Logic Gaming in blue. Team Coast in red. Freak and Kobe bringing you all kinds of awesome action. I want a repeat of CLG vs. TSM, though. I want an hour-long base race with minions and all that. Oh, yeah. You got you got that first one. I didn't. I had to watch from the, the stands there. I would definitely enjoy having one of those on our hands. But it looks like Coast have different ideas. Not only did they go with that real early game lineup, they also bought Red Elixir here early on Shifter. He's looking for that all-in. Zed notorious for you know going very hard, uh, very early, burning his Ignite uh, within the first few minutes. And they have a really interesting setup here as well because both teams sent their, their main lineup towards the enemy red buff, sent their, their uh, support over to Ward defensively, and then sweep back over. CLG now know about this. They're walking through a ward as well. And though both teams know, okay, they've invaded our red, they've invaded our red, but the teams don't know that they've been spotted doing this. Yeah, basically a mirror match here. Uh, we'll have to see how each team reacts with the exact same information because... They're both well aware. It looks like they're just trying to get the vision down, uh, having the wards on the buffs. Like the players have said, it's so important, especially the first buffs. The first two buffs that you secure are basically the most important uh, of the game for that jungler because it means the difference between a level 2 or a level 3. And so the teammates uh, of the junglers have mostly recalled back. It's Big Fat LP at the end still camping around this red buff right here. Still with vision control. Looks like they're not getting stabbed by Coast. And of course, the same thing here. It's, it's Daydream and Nintendo and uh, Don't Mash Me trying to steal the CLG red buff here at level 1. Yep, so it looks like they are going to get the steal off for both teams. So it'll just be a red trade. Uh, and then both teams actually have pretty good vision of the exits of the jungle. Uh, unless Big Fat LP goes up that top way then both teams will be alerted. Eve, though, did not burn did not burn her smite. Looks like Big Fat LP can hold on to his as well, so they can secure that all-important second buff. And Big Fat's actually going to sit in the enemy jungle and clear out the last little bit of that camp, get the last little mini lizard right here for Big Fat. Uh, but interestingly, we have a 2v2 lane bottom here, and this is one thing that 
Uh, concerns me a little bit for CLG because Double has called Tristana a week later, saying that he will keep Tristana in his lane until he just crushes that guy in minion kills. But he's fighting Draven Thresh, who are uh, really good laning champions. Exactly. They're going to try and bully them out, plus they're going to call in Nintendo for extra jungle support. So it was a very, very nice pink ward by Chaster at the exact right time. He placed that pink ward right when Nintendo was coming down through the river. So he's looking for the mid lane instead. He's going to jump right onto Link. Can he get the damage up? But he needs jumps in as Shifter. Link down below half HP. Good early push there by Nintendo. Yeah, and the jungle changes also kind of benefited Jungle Evelyn too because there's more emphasis on the buffs. Uh, instead of the small camps, you know, she can just go roaming right after she gets the buffs and you get a free chunk, 50% of Link's life out there. I'm sure Shifter appreciates that one. And of course, Link only started with a Doran's uh, ring and two potions, so he has very, very limited health sustain. I would not be surprised to see uh, Nintendo show up uh, every once in a while as well. And the other thing I actually want to call question to, speaking of the dude, is he is normally the tank player for his team. Normally he enables Zion to play a carry like Riven, this time around, actually, Zion's on a tank here. Nintendo didn't want to see if he goes for that, that Lizard Elder we see so much, or if he goes for Golospear as he normally does, even on champions like Fiddlesticks. Yeah, I'd have to guess that he would probably go with the Lizard Elder still, just because it's so popular and so effective on Evelyn, getting that uh, true damage burn. But Evelyn, as soon as she hits level 6, you know her ultimate does give her a nice shield, so he's still bringing some tankiness to the party here. Looks like his gank up top, though, is going to be at the exact wrong time as Nian has already left the area. Nian has recalled back, picks up a tier and a pig ward, and is moving his way back to the lane. So, looks like Coast does not really get much of a shove here in the top lane. Actually, they're letting Zion Spartan freeze it. So, unfortunately for Nintendo, he does waste some time. But let's revisit this bottom lane here, because this is the one, I think, that is make or break here for Counter Logic Gaming is can double if get going. And right now, it is 25 to 25 at exactly even lane right here. For CLG. And it has to be uh, some very opportune hooks coming down while Eve is in the area, I think, because Chaster and Double Lift playing this one nice and safe, just yesing, not even going for the trade. So they're actually at higher health than Don't Mash Me right now. That was very good play by them. So it's, uh, the, yeah, exactly. It's CLG holding out of this one, and of course, I think they'll be happy to wait till late game for this one right here. So, Nian versus Zaya Spartan. Notice how far back Nian is playing, actually. is really only last hitting with Shock Blast there. Is afraid of that Evelyn. We haven't seen her on the map in a while. And that's putting a lot of pressure on the CLG lineup. Ooh, he just went so close to the edge there. He barely got seen by the edge of that. Oh, no, he didn't get seen by the pink ward. He goes in on double. They put a uh, lantern onto him. Interesting choice right there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, double just kind of jumps right on back. No big deal there. Not a successful gig here by Nintendo. So that early Evelyn pressure has not done much. And you're seeing actually a three minion kill lead for Big Fat LP. A slightly larger emphasis on farming. He, that Nast is pulling ahead. Yeah, so when you check a lantern over in that bush, it, it definitely gives <laughs> gives him away. You're shining a light on your invisible ganker. And Nintendo, actually, uh, another unsuccessful gank right there. Yeah, shows up in the mid lane right as Link is clearing away the race right here. So CLG, still not trying to make moves with Roaming, are just going for the farm right here. Shifter might spot Big Fat LP. I think they see each other right there on the brush. Ward comes out, Wither comes across. Not too big of a deal right there. Ah, more harass from Big Fat, but he's running low on man at this point. They did get uh, some good information. Now they know where Nasus is, so the rest of the lanes don't have to worry. And it's actually pretty big for Zion. Since Nian went with the pink ward, Zion can't place uh, any sort of vision around that top lane. So that's a good thing for them right here. So here we go. We look at the top lane once again. Still very, very close in mini kills right now. So no major leads have been given. They tend to spend a lot of time trying to gank, but hasn't gotten much more than a couple of minion lead. So we're going to have Nintendo, again, probably come through this uh, pink ward that Nien Ooh. placed. CLG, they've done a really good job not hesitating to pay the pink ward Evelyn tax that uh, that all, all teams are really faced with at the beginning. And it's paid off really well for them. They have not lost any people to those Evelyn ganks. But they're going to have to find a way to now deal with level 6 Shen. Stan United available to come in. There we go. And only the end can really stop that. He does have the Thundering Blow there. Uh, the melee hammer form E ability to try to stop the teleport if they want to do it. Of course, Nintendo getting closer to six as well. Right now, only five and a quarter, but he's making his way up compared to Big Fed LP, who actually is 
pretty much at five and a quarter as well. Now, both these, these champions do different things at level six, though. Nasus can solo Dragon. That's pretty scary. Nintendo, though, has really good gank power. And Nintendo has gotten into the jungle just before this pink ward went down for Link. So he's on the very edges of Link's vision, and he's looking to come in behind him. Looks for something right there. Big Fettle P does grab the red buff, though. He's right behind. Nintendo's going to actually back away from this one. And he gets seen out. He that does get picked away. Finally gets him. Good pick. Good good vision there by uh, by uh, Team CLG to realize, okay, guys, we got to be careful of this one. We can get picked on right here. But Nintendo, with pink ward control, he's looking towards this dragon. I mean, he's he's really waiting around trying to see if his team can go for it. And they do have Draven bought, buying first. So he already had the BF sword. And Double F still coming back from the fountain right there means that they won't be able to contest this. So pink ward for Coast actually pays off even more, and they just grab the global objective. Really good early setup here. 700 gold lead there. First Dragon Team Coast, eight minutes in. It's going to respawn about 14. We'll see where these guys go with it. Now, Nintendo, interestingly enough, he's got an energy mid laner. He actually might be given the blues. It would be nice on Zed to get those, but it's pretty early, so you you don't really uh, need that on Zed, so it probably will, like you're saying, go to Nintendo, and that's amazing for Evelyn because you know, with the about a month ago or whatever, when we we upped the mana cost on her Qs, it did hurt a little bit. And anytime you get that mid-game blue buff for a jungler, it's very impressive. He won't, however, be getting his mid-game red buff. <laughs> no, indeed, Big Fat with a good steal right there. Good ward coverage as well. And speaking of the jungle buffs as well, uh, that blue buff, Evelyn was like barely five and a half, maybe even below that right there. It got that full half level, hit level six from getting the blue buff. Good power spike for her. So she has Agony's Embrace now. In fact, every champion on the map has their ultimates available. So I feel like things are going to get explosive pretty soon as, uh, you know, Coast is the team that wants to play aggressive, wants to force engagements, wants to make things happen because they don't want to wait for Tristana to just scale into hyper carry late game. And it'll be interesting to so see where the action come from come from Coast because they actually have amazing engage. Uh, with the Stan United available, they can pick a losing fight and actually come out on top. And actually Hook lands onto Chouster right there. A little bit of damage from the stand aside, but no real follow up here for Coast. And no, uh, no engagement right there. So the hook on cooldown, Daydream will wait around a little bit more. But now Link and Big Fat LP are looking to make a move. They will walk right by a ward. And Yen up top under pressure. It's a lot of damage coming off onto him. Of course, the damage nearly there down to 300 HP. Yen might look to flash the wall. He does flash burn. Uh, and the successful sort of push at the bottom lane might just give CLG a turret. Ooh, Draven ultimate going the distance here, baby. Oh, <laughs> nice try there. But in the meantime, the bottom lane box up the grass. Big Fat LP forced to take a shield right there. Low on health, burns his ulti as well. CLG does survive that encounter, but it's Coast taking a lot of pressure onto their turret down below half HP. It's going to be shifted going in. Pop Steel goes on a link right now, but he's going to get shielded as well. There's Exhaust. Danger pulls the team in. Good shot when pulls up one. Shouts for the Ooh. beautiful crescendo. The damage is not there. Zaya's Martin might try to find it. The shield, though. Chouster's still not going down. First Blood did go to double it, and that is it. One for nothing. Oh, that crescendo by Chouster. Just beautiful. And it was set up by the shockwave of Link. Really nice synergy between the mid and the jungle. Plus, since Link max or he's maxing his command protect second from his lane phase, uh, he actually had a, a big enough shield to even save Chaucer's life after that. Coast might just get a turret for their troubles though. The wave clear comes out from NASA's Wither coming by as well. No, sorry, just the uh, Spirit Fire actually. But of course, with Shen leaving his lane, that left Nian alone now in the top lane. And last time Nian was left alone, uh, CLG beat TSM and Nian hard carried that match. So this could be rough for Coast. Yeah, he is on the Jace this time, though, so he's going to get some damage on this turret. But we have Shifter heading right towards him, and he does have his Cutlass, which, you know, it's not the same damage as the uh, Blade of the Ruined King, but he does have a, the active slow on there, too, so he's, he's good at chasing people down. Looks like Nian scares Shifter away from some of those last hits on the turret as well. That turret, by the way, down low, low, low on health, down to about one-third right here. So good early setup there, Nian. That empty lane getting some pressure there. And we look actually at this 1v1 matchup between him and Zion Spartan. And Zion is actually doing a significantly worse. Nian holding on to a 20 minion kill lead in addition to the extra turret pressure. Nian has had to purchase pink wards though. So he spent some of his extra money, you know, for those uh, pink vision wards that he's got. And he's got another one in his inventory right now, even having already placed the one in the tribus. So he's, he's not gonna let any period of time elapse where he doesn't have 
full vision up in that top lane. Speaking of vision in the top lane, Nintendude is looking to maybe make a move up there for himself. Nope, he's going to sweep out the double golems and make his way back through his own jungle. That's fine for him. And yeah, he just makes his way down. It's going to be a recall from Nian and, and no gank so far. So Nintendude on that Evelyn has really not found any early opening. CLG has completely survived this early game without much incident, uh, which is a really a good hand to them. They went for this, the uh, late game comp and they've held on everywhere. Exactly. Like what we talked about, they didn't hesitate to pay that pink ward tax. And that just resulted in no kills for Evelyn. They were able to grab that dragon for Team Coast because of the, the power that they had in the bot lane, just timing it with double lifts recall. But that really has not snowballed them at all. And CLG, with uh, the obvious late game composition here, if it keeps going this way, they are very, very happy to, to take this game the distance. And they've just found a turret to drop down as well. So uh, good good timing on CLG to push as soon as Don't Mash Me recalled away. Bottom lane turret does go down. Now, Dragon is only a minute away. Last time, Coast took that without incident. And uh, as we saw, really, I think from Velocity vs. TSM, the fact that TSM got every Dragon pretty much all game really held the mid despite an early game deficit. Uh, certainly a different team comps this time around, but the Dragon has made or break, uh, made and broken teams so far just today. So we'll see if Coast can keep that one up. And Coast are going to have their Stand United available for when this next Dragon pops up. So we'll have to see if Zion actually makes the move to get away from Niantanso and out of vision to avoid the knockbacks before coming down. But Zion's part has been constantly harassed out by Nian. Now, this bottle lane turret does get answered, but you look at Zion's health bar in the corner of your screen, he's down below half right there. And Nian has constantly been pushing him down farther and farther, going towards the Muramata, going towards the Brutalizer. He's been putting out so much damage that Zion is going to have a little bit lower impact this game than I think he's normally used to. Yeah, and he's not on one of those hard-carrying champions. He talks about how he likes to build damage, and he likes to take out the key members of his opponent's team. Not really going to be in the in the cards here for that Shen with Sunfire. And right now, actually, the pigs are going towards the mid lane. Nian was left alone to take the top lane turret down. The push is actually going to be in towards the dragon. So the top lane turret traded for dragon right here. CLG not looking to collapse Ooh. this one. But the mid lane turret is the one to be worried about, of course, because CLG still have Nasus and Oriana. They're available to push it, as well as Nian towards the top lane. They could lose more of their base. Coast hold mid. Looks like nothing's going to follow. Yeah, it's an interesting choice by Coast there. They actually bring Zion down to Dragon before they even start it, instead of having him hold that top wave and rely on the Stan United to join the team. It resulted in a few waves, uh, or one wave, getting destroyed by that top turret, and some more free farm for Nian Tanso on that Jace, already with the mana unit plus Brutalizer. In the end, with a like 30 mini kill lead that is growing larger and larger, about 25% really, he's above Zion Spartan. And the mid lane turret now also under siege. Thing is, it's a potential 4v5. They could go into this with the Stand United. The CLG really not flinching this turret three attacks away from falling. CLG, interestingly enough, are the aggressors. It's going to be very hard for Coast to actually hold this one. This is probably going to be uh, the next team fight. Here we go. The initiation comes in from Nintendo, takes a whole bunch of shields. It's going to be the initiation from all the ninjas right there. Chaps are low on house. Shotgun comes across. So it is Crescendo. One kill picked up so far. Jader puts down the buck. Link under fire. The knockback. Two kills picked up so far. Three kills picked up. Ooh. Beautiful team fight. Coast Danger Moon falls down. Nien forced to run away. Nien able to answer for at least one kill for CLG right there. But man, the all in from Coast was just devastating. Daydreaming took so much damage. He was soaking that up as a support. He really uh, enabled Don't Mash Me to continue to put his damage out with that Draven from the back lines and just devastated CLG. And they get a turret for it. And I want you to look at the scoreboard right now. The Death Cap and Infinity Edge that are right there at Lincoln Deadlift were not there for the fight. They bought those items after dying. So there was a huge power spike that Coast just circumvented by starting the fight that early, and now they're the ones in control of the map. Yeah, and it wasn't even Coast who started that fight. It was CLG picking that fight, pushing up into the mid turret here. Uh, and they just, they like you said, they hadn't purchased, so they didn't have the power now. Now with the Tristana, uh, with the Infinity Edge, things are gonna be a bit different. And I also want to point out, again, towards that depth cap of Link, because we see Athena and Holy Grail so often, or even Morella and Abacon, maybe. Hold on, Zion's actually going to find Nian. A little bit of damage here. It's going to force Nian away, I think. Yeah, uh, Taunt just comes up a little bit short, but the red buff burns him down. 
So some good fire-based damage here from Zion's support and forces the end away. But again, I want to go back to the, the, the death cap point because we normally see cooldown reduction, mana regen, Orianna. Link's like, no, no, no. I'll go triple Doran's ring for regen, but I'm going death cap. I'm going carry Orianna. I want burst. Yeah, so we've talked about this with Link and with the members of CLG. They put a lot of thought into having more threats on their team because part of the problem with them in that spring split was they didn't have other sources of damage besides double lift. So not only have they stuck double lift on a hyper carry, but boom, we've got Nian Tanso damage all day in the top, plus Link going straight for that death cap. And the re-engage now on the mid lane. This will be CLG even to get out, not even to get out, actually making it three to two in turrets right here. So the advantage now for counter logic gaming. Ooh, very close in the gold right now. Nian forces away Zion Spartan in that top lane. Just with straight attacks right there. So good pick up by Nian. Still in the lead by 30. Run on top of the Nintendo though. Still has that pink ward, but he didn't drop it, so he has to burn his flash. There we go, gets a knockback on the Nintendo, and that is all he gets. So, summoner spell burned out there. Probably worth Nintendo burning his ultimate, but now CLG looking to make moves 5, or sorry, 4v3 on the map. No ult available for Zion Spartan. This could be all they need to take a turret down. Yeah, they can siege this one up because they do have the Sona at full mana. Great wave clear here from that Zed plus Draven means that they've bought enough time for Nintendo to join the party, and CLG going to pull back off this one because they've lost sight of that Evelyn. Niantanso actually flubbed his pink ward over the side there. It <laughs> didn't get quite get in that bush. I do have to say though, I really want to commend Shifter for that. Like it, it, it sounds like a weird thing. It sounds like a weird thing to celebrate, but he basically full cleared a wave with like a 10 second cooldown. I mean, that would have been a CLG turret on a 4v3. And the fact that he got rid of that wave so cleanly and stopped CLG pushing in, like it's against minions, but it's something worth practicing to keep turrets alive. Think like mechanics like that, knowing the ability combos, pretty worthwhile. There is a blue off also getting stolen away. Nintendo did smite that one, so uh, as CLG backed, another advantage grabbed by Coast. Yeah, it's a definitely a huge strength of the Zed kit. Now, everyone talks about him being a great duelist because of his ult in the all-in combo, but using uh, just the shadow plus Ws and Q for clearing waves is a really nice tool that was taken down a little notch uh, by the increase of cooldown on his Shadow Slash. Still definitely very potent though. And now we hit into the mid game and the split push has begun. Zion Spartan on the bottom side of the map. Now Dragon's up in only a minute, so Coast doesn't have much time, but they have sent the rest of their team, I should say three members of their team, towards this top lane to try to pressure a turret down. They're met with three members of resistance, so it's going to be interesting mechanics. Can they push in on this? And they do have that Nasus. He's already used Spirit uh, Fire, though, so the wave clear isn't going to be there for this one. Cannon Minion hard to take down. The wither goes off on the Tendu, but he just gets out of that one with his W. Nice little escape there. Bye, Evelyn. So here comes CLG. This is what they wanted. The four versus four top, while they let double lift, split push, and farm constantly. It's CLG. The first team in North America to do this, probably uh, around the world. They're very uh, almost alone in this strategy, but they love having especially double lift, split pushing. And it's actually a good matchup with Shen because he can even interrupt to stand united if Shen decides to join the fight. That Buster Shot, really uh, powerful knockback. It really is, and you can see, uh, you know, he has amazing turret pressure as well right there. The old, and as you mentioned, right, it's one of the only teams that's so AD carry centric, and uh, it's actually something I, this was actually the matchup I wanted to uh, watch. This is the matchup that I picked as, as the important one, because CLG's up on the rise, and Coast is a very, very difficult opponent to fight, to fade against, face against. And CLG, again, the only team that's so AD carry centric, I want to see the strategy still works as the split goes on. If they're the only team to play this way, but still make it successful. Coast, the Dragon did respawn though, and they're the team going for it. Once again, unanswered Dragons over and over again. Third time this match, and they have a gold lead as a result. Yeah, CLG actually let up on their map pressure. They, four people here were spending time in their own jungle, and that allowed Coast, with that timer, just grab another Dragon, they really needed that dragon too, because they they want the gold lead at this point. If they just keep letting it go as is, it's going to be very hard for them to deal with that super fed double lift. And yeah, let's keep track of double lift right now because he has 7,400 gold compared to Don't Mash Me 6,700. So that is a lead there, and this is a team that has three dragons, is only down a turret. Their their AD carry has three assists on it. Like those should all be giving him more gold. But that split push double lift, he is rich. He's got almost Phantom Dancer. He's got Infinity Edge. That that champion is turned on by this point. The mid game level is over for Tristana. 
yeah. And we've seen CLG uh, do their best to protect Double Lift. In the early game, they had the Link Shockwave into the Chowster Crescendo. They're trying to use those as counter initiates instead of using them at the beginning of the fight to initiate. So once Coast use their dashes, their all-ins with Shifter and Zion Spartan to get onto Double Lift, they're going to want to use those tools as disengage. And here, ooh, speaking of disengage, Nian had to accelerate and get away from that one. Nearly got caught out there in a 2v2 engage, but the rest of Coast actually still holding on to this top side of the map. Double Lift right there again, the split push there. He's going to be up against Zion Spartan. You talked about that matchup being Pretty decent for double. I want to see how this one plays out. He has that faint shield, but it's Zion really getting shoved away. That turret is taking pressure constantly right there. Zion still getting pushed away. I mean, look at that double is, is, is chugging him down. Now he's forced to lifesteal back, but that seems to be going very well for double. Yeah, double lift is not scared. You know, he has not bought one of the lifesteal items like the Vamp Scepter, but he's got 6% from his quints and big fat OP walks right through two. Falls for that bait hook, line, and sinker, and Danger been going in for this one. Nintendo tries to show up, gets a giant set of shields, and there's the engage. Flashes for stand aside does not quite land. There's the flash taunt, lands at a big fat LP. Bottom lane turret goes down. Two kills picked up as Shifter finds Link, or sorry, finds Nian, and here comes the push. Oh, the top lane bait. You have two people pushing and two people in the bush. Really nice by Coast right there, but still, double lift. He kept shoving that lane. He's going to try and trade an inhibitor turret for Baron. It's going to be the recall for Zed. He is the one to defend this one. Shifter, it's on you to keep your and him alive. Link is around. So is uh, Chowster. So it's a weird 2v4 with Baron kind of being the third member of CLG. See if he can make it lower and lower on health. There's the fight in the bottom lane. Double ignited. Forced very far back, but we'll get the turret. Red team has slain Baron Dasher, but the crescendo comes across. Chester's gonna fall over. Baron plus one. They've saved the lane as well. So that bait up by the top turret for Coast just paid off huge. They were able to grab the Baron after that one, and Shifter was de defending against double lift, almost able to oh, finish Oh, the him. taunt lands on a link. The hook as well. Link is caught alone right there. Knockback's coming across. Another kill picked up. That was except for double lift and ace. Very, very, very sketchy now for CLG. We talked about Coast having to make a move early, and this is the prime time for them. They need to make use of this Baron buff to try and continue to get objectives. CLG, yes, they're flustered, but they're not panicking yet because they still know that they have the end game in the bag, and they've got an extra ring of secondary turrets still standing right now. They are a little bit ahead of that turret lead right there, and I kind of want to talk about this double split push then, because he's been, right, he was dueling against Zion Spartan before, couldn't quite get the turret by himself. Only when Zion left did he kill the turret. Dueled up against Shifter, Shifter pushed him away. So let's talk about double a little bit. He's only relying on his quintessences right now for lifesteal. 6% lifesteal, otherwise went I edge Phantom Dancer. When he takes early trade, it's taken him a long time to get his health back up. When we talked to Dyrus about how he was playing the poke game and trying to chunk down enemy targets to win dragons, he said, I don't want to hit Draven, he's got a Bloodthirster, he'll lifesteal back in a minion wave. Doublelift is not lifestealing back in a minion wave. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting what Doublelift's next item is, because if he's going to continue to split push and Coast send Shifter against him, then he's going to need something defensive, either a QSS to cleanse off that death mark from uh, Zed, or some sort of armor item, maybe even that uh, frozen mallet like he likes to get with the HP. He got a lot of criticism for that one last time. Uh, so it's very, very interesting to see what he goes with next. He could just build a lifesteal item like you're talking about and stay with the team for, for team fights instead of split pushing. And right now, speaking of split pushing, there are 10 seconds left on Zion Spartan's ultimate coast, sitting far back, making sure they do not get count caught without Stand United. And on this wave, they're going to have the Shen ulti. Zion making his way around the map right now, but Coast still trying to put pressure on the turret. Just takes the lantern every time he uh, hits the turret down. Makes sure not to get caught, and they're making good work on this turret. Yeah, they're making good work on the bottom turret. Plus, Zion up there free farming up in the top. He's going to be able to get the top one too. Double yeah. lift going up to head him off. Absolutely huge. And now don't match me, forced to lifesteal back. And look at the difference right there. Oh, it takes a shock blast, but generally speaking, getting a lot out of that one. Top lane turret, lower on health. But again, CLG sends double lift. That's the player. 
the Tristana. That's the champion who's getting all the farm here for CLG. It's on him to make that late game carry. Still scaling up, but Coast are still relentless with the front door. And Tristana's chasing around Zion Spartan here. He's running through the bush as well as Inhibitor turns under attack. And they get the initiation on the Don't Bash Me. Their Shadow comes on the Daydream, though. So Bash Me's kind of caught a low, but one kill happens right now. The fight has begun, and Coast are actually forced to run away from this one. But uh, Devlift is right here on the corner. Does not go in for it, just a one for zero. CLG tried to engage four versus five right there because they had caught Don't Match Me in a bad position, but because they can't finish him off, they pay for that one while Double Lift is just walking through the jungle. A little bit of an unfortunate move there by Double Lift then, and of course, Coast did a good job of splitting them up right there. Another dragon goes down unanswered every single time. Coast keep pulling up Global Gold. Dragons, Barons equally get up on turrets. These guys are doing very well in the mid game. Yeah, we said they needed to make use of that Baron, and they definitely did. Great job by Coast, pressing the advantage, and that uh, lifesteal difference that you talked about between Double Lift and Don't Mash Me. Very apparent there after that last fight. And actually now the gold between the 80 carries has equalized. They're both sitting at 9,800 right now. So that lead that was there for Double has been turned not turned around, but equalized here. So Mashby should be a similarly fierce of AD carry as long as you don't necessarily count the steroids and the safety of Tristana's long range. So the damage output coming out of this Coast lineup is still going to be very, very strong at this time. Yeah. CLG, they are almost able to grab Don't Mash Me and take him down in that fight. Four versus five. Remember, we didn't have double lift in that actual bottom fight. So CLG probably going to return to turtle mode right now and defend their turrets. Wait for Coast to make a dive. Let's see if they go for that dive right there. Of course, Coast, it's a little bit harder for them to dive. To, uh, actually, I don't know if that's actually true right here. So they don't have Zack or someone who truly really just wants to go in there, builds only armor, and a, is a huge tanky man. But at the same time, they do have Zion Spartan with Ninja Tabby, Aegis, Randwin Zobin, Sunfire Cape. He is a massive, massive armor tank there, and maybe he can dive turrets. They would definitely prefer not to dive turrets and use Evelyn's ability to flank CLG. It's kind of what they're doing right now. If they draw CLG out into the jungle and then surround them, Coast would definitely love a fight out here in the open. And right now, Zion Spartan has another 25 seconds on his ulti. So uh, if, if Coast gets caught out, it will be a 4v5. But Coast are just splitting counter logic gaming around the map. They go east coast, west coast. And now onto this left hand side, this turret is going to be going down. So 5 to 4. Coast are, are manipulating the map so very, very well. It turns out that a Zion Spartan smiley face might just have been split pushing <laughs> because these guys are doing that very well. Yeah, this is that map pressure that you gain with the Shen pick. Yes, Zion's not on that hard carry that he usually likes to be, the snowball champion, but it gives you this option in the late game where you've got an extra uh, global move here from Zion doesn't get the red. Double if they able to knock him away and grab that one, but He's still more pressure. Oh, maybe he fails a wall. So this is just not double his day. <laughs> At least he got the red. Actually, I learned uh, very unfortunately a couple days ago that you can uh, ult minions and, and fail to knock away a champion. That was rough. But looks like double is using that to good effect for himself, though. Has at least grabbed that one away. And now he is continuing to just try to be that carry. 290 minions, by the way. He is well above everyone else. I shouldn't say well above. Nian's close behind him. Those are like the two CS gods of, of like. The, the LCS uh, North America here. Nien and, and Double, always the ones who kill minions. So Double has not gone also with the defensive item for his third item this time around. He's listened to the fans and he's gotten a third damage item going with the Last Whisper so that they can have the presence in the team fights. Because Double Up has itemized this way, we can be looking for CLG to actually flash Crescendo and be using their CCs offensively, so they want to flash Crescendo to initiate and then follow that up with the Shockwave. To get this fight, though, they're going to try and draw Coast over to Baron here and force the Stand United from Zion. Zion's more definitely pushing that one down, but Baron is dying faster right here. Nintendo goes in, lands the stuff, and there's all the shields coming in. Chaser low, low, low on health, but the re-engage is there, and it's double kill so far for uh, Don't Mash Me. Keeps chasing on down, forcing CLG away. Stand aside does land, double takes a shield. Shifter still on the chase. Will they get number three? They do. Triple kill picked up for Don't Mash Me. They might just be able to clean up Baron. How many thousands of HP was shielded on Nintendo right there? That was 
ridiculous. No way CLG could burst through that one. Good job by Coast, immediately reacting to the Baron draw right there. And Double Lift recalling in a bad spot, but uh, Daydreamer doesn't quite see him. Flash hook. Oh, he doesn't land it in time. Nice try, Daydreamer, but unfortunately couldn't make that one happen. Link still on the run away. Shifter is nearby. Zion Spartan also chasing as well. They're setting Don't Mash Me on the split push right there, but Double will be there to defend him. There's a slow on to Link. Was it big enough damage? Yes, it is. Shifter takes the kill. Able to grab another one, so that's pretty huge. The Baron wasn't taken, though, because all the members of CLG, the stragglers, were able to run through Coast Jungle and waste the members of Coast time. They didn't pick up a Baron on top of that, so it's actually a pretty good job by CLG, making the best of a bad situation. So good job by CLG, then to bait them around. It's Coast still the team with the lead. They won that last team fight very, very, very well. The engage was strong. And uh, don't mash, we just got huge. 4 0 and 6. You can see he's actually now a little bit ahead of Double Lift on the item table. Has about a thousand gold lead over him as well. But Coast says, you know what? Last time uh, we fought around Baron, we won. Let's go for it again. It's now Coast running Baron. And they have an Oracles too. So Daydream been doing a good job even clearing out all the vision around here while his team just destroys Baron. Absolutely amazing. No even contest right there for Counter Logic Gaming. So Coast on. Answered dragons, unanswered barons, unanswered team fights. Heck, they've now got a 10,000 gold lead, basically, and this is looking like coast game. I don't know. If, I don't know if CLG's ability to say, "Yeah, we'll hold on forever," might work this time. Yeah, last time Coast got the Baron, they made a huge run. They got three turrets plus three more kills onto CLG. We'll have to see if they can make as good of use of this one. Pretty sure that they're going to go back to the old split pushing strategy that Stan United only has 20 more seconds to come back off. So they can just leave Zion down there in the bottom and have the rest of the team group up just like they've been doing all game long. And speaking of building armor, is that going to be a thorn mail from Zion Spartan? He's got Shade Fest and a cloth armor. I mean, already has a million health and armor, but wants about a million more. And at that point, I feel like Double will kill himself attacking him. Would you say he'd walk a million miles? Yes. <laughs> he's Always. got He's got all armor. This is the reason he's itemizing like this is because the late game threat that he's most worried about is that double lift and the Nian. So he's really made the choice here uh, to try and dodge Link's shockwave. If he can avoid the shockwave uh, combo there from Link, then it's going to be perfect itemization for him because uh, double lift is going to be returning that damage, uh, the auto attack damage, back onto himself. Here we go. So a lot of threats right here. Should have removed if he only hits Zion Spartan here. Of course, has a taunt, so we can force that for a little while. And he is on the split push there. Two and a half minutes left on Baron. And we see Zion Spartan in your top lane. The rest of Coast all the way down onto the bottom. Nintendoed X, uh, uncharacteristic of himself, has built ability power this game. He's got a blue elixir. He's got Leandry's Torment. He's got Sorcerer's Shoes. This is, this is a new look for Nintendoed a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a, a fan of building damage when it's appropriate. And because we saw in the last team fight where the Stan United shield came on top of the Agni's Embrace shield, he obviously does not need any more defense after that. He's got plenty to work with. Plenty to work with indeed. There we go to Ian just sweeping on the top lane. It's actually him this time and not Doublelift taking that free lane farm just to make sure that they have double there when, it, when a team fight possibly starts here in the bottom lane. This turret, look how low the health bar is. Just a few shots will bring it down. Now will Coast engage and Tendude is around. Daydreamer looks for a hook right there, does not quite land it. And Coast are afraid to engage over a Shockwave Crescendo. And they really can bide their time right now. They don't have to rush. We do have a nice taunt here from Zion though, getting, getting some harass on Yantanso up top. Seems to be working him down quite successfully in the end. Does have 16% lifesteal though, so if you wanted to wait around a mini wave, so he could do so more or less okay. Zion is just. He, he, I think it's like as soon as he kills the mini wave, he actually goes onto the turret, lets the end hit him, and just shields it. And he's slowly making his way in. Ooh, good hook here, but they don't decide to all in because they don't need to. Like you said, Zion's letting Nian hit him because. That uh, thorn mail that we talked about, returning that 30% of incoming damage as magic damage, works with Jace too. Jace also, uh, not only does he have the shock blast, but a huge part of his damage are the auto attacks. 
They are, and you can see him building towards a Bloodthirster right here. So more attack damage is going to be coming out from Nian. Look at Ko still playing this game again. Just a couple shots to go, but the counter engage is so strong. Another hook on a big fan LP that gets some damage. There's the engage from Nintendo, takes the shield as well. Crescendo, a beautiful knockback from Devil, but Shifter might not be done. Takes an exhaust, forced to run away. There's a turret going down. Box comes across as well. Who's going to fall down first? It might just be Chouster. Zai's Bart takes that kill. It's the kill on a big fan LP as well. And they force CLG back. Link forced to flash into his own fountain right there. Nashby just trying to get away. Puts a shield on. Can he survive the end? No. Shotgun now hits Zaya's Bart, and Zaya's Bart will go down. There's the kill coming across. Double it finds Nintendo. Nintendo's gonna die in two more attacks, and he drops down. Double it. Huge kills picked up right here. They can't keep moving forward. Looks like he'll just sweep the minions. Ooh, don't mash me. Really wanted blood in that one. He went all the way to the steps of the fountain, and it actually backfired a little bit for Coast there. CLG able to answer, and if Shifter gets caught in this bush, that would be terrible. But CLG. Not with uh, any sort of sixth sense. They can't sense that one out, so they're just going to shove. They're looking for something to pressure there right now. Devils is making a beeline towards that bottom lane inhibitor turret, and actually, that turret has two health right now. CLG will take that turret down. Shifter, it's up to him to defend an inhibitor. Yeah, he's got to be careful, though, because Shifter does have the all-in ability, and Doublelift has no defensive items. There's a pressure on. Double taking the death mark to his face. Shifter shows back up there, picks up one. Now Link is alone. Will it be enough damage? Look at the health mark getting just evaporated right now. Shifter with the Zen mechanics double kill. Yeah, that's why I said you got to be careful. No defensive item means that Tristana not able to deal with Shifter. He did the exact play we were talking about, where Shifter uses his death mark, waits for the knockback, buster shot used by double lift, immediately returns back to the shadow, able to finish him off. Absolutely amazing play then, Shifter saving the inhibitor there. And of course, it's now 35 seconds of power play, five versus three. The bottom inhibitor already dead, mid lane, minions are shoving down right now. It's only gonna get better for Team Coast as their other waves will keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Mid lane second turret going down. Minions are dead, good wave through by Nian, but they might keep going. Yeah, Shifter definitely just made up for the little blooper that happened in CLG's base. Now they've got another 15 seconds of free attacking this turret, and that's gonna be enough for the inhibitor too. There we go, number two inhibitor is gonna be going down. Looks like they will not try to backdoor anything else. Baron and Dragon both coming up in one minute's time. If they die here, gives a pretty good chance that CLG can turn that one back around. So here we go, this is the situation. Two and him's dead. Neutral buffs not really on the map right now. Uh, sorry, the major ones like Dragon and Bear not on the map right now for a little bit. Coast gonna recollect themselves, but they're the leading team. Yeah, you gotta tip your hat to Shifter if you are a Coast fan right now. He just uh, pretty much secured that middle inhibitor and having two inhibitors down as opposed to one means that all of Coast can now actually head down that top lane they don't even have to have Zion split pushing down bottom. The minions will do that for them. And let's watch this as they collect themselves up. 30 seconds on Baron, 30 on Dragon as well. It's going to be something that might just pull their attention around. They've so far done very well when they have attempted Baron. Coast have made those uh, attempts very, very successful, never under the threat of getting smited away. They've snuck them in uh, quite nicely. The buffs are getting grabbed. It's their turn to make a move. Yeah, and not only does Coast have an Oracles with cleared out all of the vision from CLG, even into their own jungle, but they see double lift down bottom farming. So this is pretty much a free Baron for Coast right now. CLG know that they don't really have a chance to go and contest that one. A 5 versus 5 out in the open, Chansey, plus the minions would destroy their base. That is Chansey, so they're going to know. go ahead and let that Pokemon slip free. Counter Logic Gaming going to hold on to just their base and farm the minions. Now, CLG have been in this situation before on the receiving end. It was actually Nien's Tristana that held on forever with inhibitors and barons and turrets going down, and he carried Marn in the spring split through a game there over Counter Logic Gaming. Now the fates are turned around, Coast are ahead, CLG have that Tristana, they're in their base, but they have so many defensive tools, can Doublelift do it? They have the Tristana, plus they actually have AoE CC to set him up. If they perfectly land the Crescendo into the Shockwave, and Draven is a little bit too far forward, CLG can easily come back from this one because Double Lift, if he gets one target down, then they will just go rampant. They absolutely will go rampant here. Double Lift forcing uh, himself back away. The engage looks like it's going to happen. Big oh. Fed LP taking a bit of pain, 
Dravidal comes across as well, but nothing else really found. Big Fat forced to heal away. Zion putting pressure on the bottom side of the map, though. Someone must respond before CLG loses an inhibitor turret. I love what Coast are doing there. They aren't grouping up for the possibility of that uh, crescendo shockwave combo. Not only do they have Zion Spartan down bottom, but they have Nintendo who is flanking around the sides. And the top turret takes damage as well. Doubles was pulled back to defend that in, uh, that Nexus turret, and it allowed Coast to put pressure up towards the top. There's that uh, structure is taking more and more damage. The strangle is coming here from Coast. Yeah, Nintendo continually sitting around here, threatening Chaucer from the side. They won't let their entire team get knocked up. Look at the power of that tanky Zion Spartan right there. Turrets down to half, of course. Nexus turrets do regen, but you can see it's still losing health over and over. Locket Shield comes across. Looks like Coast don't quite want to go into this one, though. Blue Inhibitor has respawned, so Coast might have to stop to take more, more of those inhibitors down. Or will they keep rushing this turret? Hook comes across, does not quite land. The rest of CLG are still there to defend. But this bottom inhibitor getting soloed right now by Zion Spartan. And it's going to be double looking forward to it and maybe stopping it. Zion's not killing the structure very fast. Yeah, he it immediately spawned, though, and he just starts chunking away at it. He'll back off as double lift pats him there. But it opens up the top side. No double lift up top means that they're... They're slowly chipping away at that turret as well. And the end is chipping away at Nintendo, though. Has to take a lantern on his way back out. The Baron buff giving the rest of Coast some regen. And there we go. One more attack to go. And Zion Spartan turns around, picks up the inhibitor. So still two inhibs dead. Super minions will continue to flood into the base. And it's getting just it's getting harder and harder to breathe for CLG. Yeah, Double It's having to run to the mid lane, clear out those super waves, run back to Zion, poke him down a little bit, run back to the mid lane. He has so much work to do right now, while also being ready to start the fight with Coast at the drop of a hat. Good poke is coming out, though Nintendo down to half. Mash be low on health as well. Another poke at Nintendo. He wants to engage, gets the shield. They jump on in. He runs for the back line. Devil taking a bunch of pain, and there comes Shifter. Will it be enough to break through barrier? Oh, not quite enough, but it's a double kill so far coming through for Don't Mash me. Huge engagement there. Nintendo has fallen, but it's a 4v3 right now. Hogwarts have to come out. CLG will have to re-engage this. That's all three inhibitors down, and Team Co still have four people up, but Double Lift's coming in. And the pool lands on a Double Lift. He has a flash away. Rocket jumps out as well. Bash me in a duel with the end. Is it going to be enough damage? It's close. Now the end goes down. Now Double Lift, one of the only members still alive, takes a shield from Oriana, but Coast are still looking to close this out. They have blood in their eyes. Daydreaming, looking for his next hook, looking for the next engage right there. More shields on a double, more poke, they land the hook. There's the engage, the taunt, the damage. They pick him up. It's now onto the Nexus. That's going to be Team Ghost taking this one. Don't mess me, already back to full life with that 22% life steal. Link by himself, not able to defend the Nexus. The second turret does go down. Taunt lands, Link just falls over. Zion Martin takes the kill. That's the game. Team Coast pulling it up. Nice job there from Team Coast. Congratulations. They really did deserve that one because...